I've had quite a few questions about my BBC appearance that I did last week, talking about street clutter and outside dining and how I get on as a blind person. Now I use a guide dog and I use a long cane. Some of the time with my guide dog, he will navigate around if he's allowed space. But let's get into it. Let's see what I had to say to BBC. A wheelchair user who went viral for a video showing her struggle to get down a street full of alfresco diners is urging businesses not to forget disabled people in its outdoor seating plans. 25-year-old Katie Pennick's video of her struggling to fit through the gaps between diners in the cluttered streets of Soho has been viewed more than 885,000 times on Twitter. And you can see just literally every few seconds she'll navigate one obstacle and then there's another. And it goes on for over a minute. And one thing that she says about her wheelchair is that it's, it's actually a child's size wheelchair, which measures 23 inches width. An adult wheelchair would be around 30 to 32 inches. So you can see how she's struggling to get through. So that video has gone viral. It's, it's had so much traction on social media with uh, other wheelchair users and people with disabilities. It takes a while for them to even notice her, doesn't it? Yeah, others saying obviously they're finding the same. Um, one person in Derby has said that actually she is on a, a council committee and, and this is something that they consider and if there isn't adequate provision for people in wheelchairs, uh, they won't give a license for the alfresco dining. Well, she put that out there. In her frustration, it has got people talking. So let's talk a bit more about it. How widespread an issue is this for disabled people? Um, we can talk now to Siobhan Mead from the Guide Dogs charity. Um, well, I mean, Siobhan, the pictures just said it all, didn't they? Is this something that you have experienced? Yes, it is many, many times, actually. And I think over the last um, month or so, when we see um, the restrictions have lifted somewhat in terms of restaurants being able to offer people outside seating. So for someone who um, is totally blind, like me, who works with a guide dog, I have noticed so many uh, times now where I have to literally battle my way through and understandably we're all wanting to to go out and socialize with uh, with our friends and family but it's just about asking for for space and just to, you know just to be aware that you know we need to be able to navigate safely through familiar streets how exhausting is it because you're already having obviously to to navigate using landmarks like curbs, the edges of buildings, which, you know, that's something that you're used to, but that's obviously something that most of us, you know, others who don't have the disability wouldn't be able to conceive of what you have to take into account. But add into the mix the, the, the furniture on the streets and the fact that it's taking people time to even notice that you're there. Yeah, it's incredibly exhausting. Um, as someone who, like I say, lives with uh, total blindness, and I can speak for, for many people who have said to me that it actually takes them a lot longer to be able to get through and even being noticed. We understand that many people are kind of isolated or, or not being able to go out because they're having to, to kind of find alternative routes or sometimes it's not even possible to, possible to find alternative routes and it's about just be, just making awareness of, of how dangerous um, it can be and actually it's just looking out for each other and we want people to be able to enjoy their meals but equally if we're going within those two meters we're not necessarily keeping to those social distancing so it's very very challenging and we want to do all we can to ensure that people with disabilities um, are going to be um, supported in terms of, of street clutter and furniture. I mentioned, um, I mean, there's been so much on, on social media about this. And one comment that caught my eye was um, somebody in Derby who's on the committee of the council when they consider applications for licenses. And actually, if the wheelchairs can't get through or there's not provision, they don't get the licenses. Does that not happen everywhere? It's something that um, I actually haven't heard of, but I, 
I'm guessing that maybe um, moving forward, that's something that potentially could be looked at. Mm. But um, it's I think it's just a case of if there isn't enough provision or enough space for people to be able to safely navigate, then there needs to be other other provisions in place because obviously we want uh, pavements to be safe for everyone to travel and it's not necessarily people with disabilities it's parents with pushchairs as well so mm -hmm. it's something that I think could be looked at moving forward definitely. So in the meantime what would you say to people in terms of helping to make it easier for anybody that's struggling to navigate these environments because you know maybe people might wonder you know how much help somebody might want when they're in a tricky situation. I think it's about um, being able to be confident and maybe asking or calling out for assistance if someone's able to assist in in terms of being able to safely guide you or, or verbally guide you through. But then again, it's, it's just a simple ask, I think. It's mm. just about allowing enough space for someone to be able to navigate. Um, if you leave enough space for a person who uses a wheelchair, then that's likely that a guide dog or a pushchair is going to be able to safely navigate. So it's just about looking out for each other and uh, supporting in terms of leaving enough space and not actually leaving anything that someone could potentially trip over like a bag. Thank you so much, Siobhan. Thank you for joining us. Let me know your thoughts, guys. What do you think? Do you think there needs to be more enforcement about street clutter, street furniture? For me, as someone who is totally blind, I really struggle with street furniture and outside dining. The reasons why is because it can change from day to day. Now, as I'm navigating with Marty, he can often walk around obstacles, but sometimes there's just not enough space. Now, if I'm using my cane, that's a different thing altogether I end up finding every single street furniture lamp post bag and it does take me a lot longer now if the route is blocked it often means that I have to go onto a road or into an unfamiliar environment which leaves me feeling really really anxious and nervous let me know your thoughts in the comments below and on that note have you hit the subscribe button I'll catch you soon